it's Janie Pendleton. We're back as promised, and we are going to discuss the packaging, or the envelope, we like to call it, of a pattern. All right, so here we've chose our pattern. It's 1449 double A, right here in about the middle of the pattern to the upper left size on most patterns. And this, so if you go through and um, you just want to cruise, oh, start opening drawers and start cruising the drawers and just start pulling out the yellow patterns. I found these that way instead of just going through the book. Um, I find it more fun to dig through the drawers. So, <laughs> so that's what I did to find these. But you could also open up the pattern books at the store and find what you like that way. But I just know what to look for, and um, especially doing the children or doll clothes or anything like that, you'll find it in the yellow stripe under Simplicity. And so that's how I did this one. But certainly, by all means, open up the book and uh, and find what you like. I like about Simplicity is that they have multiple styles of the same dress. Here you'll see the body of the dress is the same as the body of this dress, but this has two more gathering pieces. There's 14 pieces, pattern pieces, in this all together, and I'll show you that on the back. So here we have some pieces for the hat, sleeves, or if you want, I see it sleeves on all of them. Here there's like an apron on this one. Check pattern. The front of this is, the bodice is split, and they've put in some grommelets and some simple buttonholes here. See if you can see that. I'm getting in the front side of the light there. I'm going to zoom in instead. There we go. So you can stay in the light. All right, so here they've just used some buttonholes. Put in something like that. You can use a shoestring. You can make a ribbon. You can make a string out of the same fabric that you're sewing like you would if you were upholstering furniture for piping. So, I mean, there's a lot you can do here. You can run ribbon. Um, some white ribbon with this uh, gingham check dress would be beautiful. You can see here that there's actually like a clear skirt here, like an apron. You could even do a white apron over this. Um, you could do a white dress with a patterned uh, fabric over the top. Or you could just keep that over apron off and just do something like this. You could give it like a some white striping here and give it like a lapel and maybe do like a sailor's dress look. You could do the same white piping here on the hat. And then here, these two dresses are the same. One's in a floral print and one is just plain white. Um, this would even make for a good nightgown. If you got some really soft material like they have here, some nice knit cotton. Um, something stretchy and soft like you'd make pajamas, some soft pajamas out of. Thin and lightweight. It would flow really well. So this could be a day dress, a summer dress, or even a nightgown. I think it'd make a great nightgown, actually. And so you have several different patterns here. Here they've taken the same dress here, and then they've cut it here and here, and made two more larger pieces that you would gather together to make a layered look. And that's really cute as well. And this look here would be really cute if you did some special embroidery stitching at the top, some gathering stitches at the top, and I think smocking. Remember when you used to get the tops with smocking? That would be gorgeous at the top of these pieces here, that you could smock this area right here. So there is a lot you can do. Let me pull back here. There's a lot you can do here with this pattern of this dress. I mean, the sky's the limit. Like I said, you can add some embellishments, some buttons down the front here would be really cute, some large colorful buttons. Um, on my dress, I got some white fabric, and I'm going to maybe add some patchwork. I showed you the patches here. You can trim the dresses in pretty colorful bias tape. You can add some patchwork to the dresses. Isn't that pretty? And here's another one. And like I said, this is a beginner's project. It's very easy. Um, you could pump this dress out by the time you cut out the pattern and iron it, um, cut out the fabric, uh, read your directions. You always want to read your directions first, even if it seems easy. Even a polished seamstress can make a mistake, and that's why they make seam rippers. So be sure and get you a few of those. <laughs> but if we read directions, uh, we shouldn't have to do too much seam ripping, right? Usually the only time I seam rip if, if I don't like a top stitch. All right, 
So that's the front of our pattern. And you can see here I've got this one circled. It's the same as the one that's wearing in the, the girl's wearing in the picture here. And I'm not making the hat. I'm just making just the dress. And that's what we're sticking to. And I'm going to go with the 18 month size. And I'm going to make sure that I have all the lengths that I need here to make an 18 month dress. Now this is something she'll wear in the spring and that's two or three months away. So I can either wait and measure her since she's growing so quickly to make the dress or I can go ahead and say yes, I can make this dress because there's other sizes to the patterns here. This probably will take you about four hours to make if you're new at it. And don't get frustrated if it takes you two days or three days. Take your time, read the directions forward and backwards, read them several times, make sure you have all your materials, and we're going to show you that step next. But make sure you have all your materials that you need on hand, measuring tapes, scissors, everything you need, and, um, and just lay out your pattern according to the directions, okay? Now different fabrics will have that you buy will have different grains running different directions. So you want to be sure and pay attention to the fabrics that you have and make sure that you place your patterns um, either um, right side up or right side down as described in the directions and we're going to teach you that as well. So there is a list of things that you need to know when you read the directions. Um, the different symbols and what they mean, the triangles and the cuts and different things. We're going to go over that when we actually make the dress. Okay, so right now we're going to talk about, let's flip the pattern over. This is the price. Again, you have your pattern number. And then of course you have that this pattern is copyrighted in 2014 and Simplicity Pattern Company and all rights are reserved. So you have this information here, which is where it's distributed and who it's distributed to. So what we're going to do now is we've decided, let me grab my pen here. Let me get my erasable pen. So basically what we're gonna start with, again, we have the pattern number here in the upper left-hand corner. Here's where it says the 14 pieces. We're gonna decide which pattern we're going for. We know from the front that we're going to go with D. C and D is actually the same, but we're going to go with D. So I'm gonna circle this dress right here. That's the one we're going for, and I'm gonna circle D, okay? So that's the one that we're going for. So this is a very important number, because now over here, I'm going to find dress A and B is here, dress C and D is right here. So I'm gonna mark my dress like this right here with some arrows, just like that right there. That way I won't, when I'm out shopping uh, for material C, I won't look at any of these other dresses, okay? But if I ever pick another dress, I can just erase this back off and then I can go for another uh, shopping spree there. I'm just gonna make dress D. So here's dress D and C. They have the same pattern pieces, so we're gonna stick with that. And then here is the hat. We're not making the hat at this time. We're gonna keep this simple for you. So we've got our dress marked. We know that we can use a 45 wide fabric, and I'll just put a W here so you know what that means, or we can use a 60 wide fabric. Now, most cotton fabrics will come, if they're not commercial or upholstery grade fabrics, they will come at the 45, and that's what we got. So now we're gonna draw a line over here in our arrow, and we need to decide on the size of the pattern. And I'm doing D, I'm doing 45 wide fabric. And by the way, on the bolt of fabric, uh, when you look at the end of a bolt of fabric, it'll tell you how wide that you're looking at here. Now, um, C has some flat lace on it, but we're not doing C. So what I should have done is I should have put my little arrow right here. Now this is where this comes in handy. Look, watch me erase that little piece there. There we go. Now I know that I'm in here now. Okay, so now I wanna come over here and I need to know how much yardage that I need. Let's come back up here and let's look at body measurements. We got the dress picked out. So now we need to figure our body measurements and I'm going to circle her body measurements. Now I know that her chest 
is about an 18. So it was an 18. Her waist was about uh, 15 and her approximate height is 26. But I'm making this for spurring. So that means I'm going to go with this one. That means she can grow two more inches all the way around and this dress and of course it's a dress so it's I mean the only elastics around the shoulders and the arms I just have to make sure to give her enough room in the arms other than that here's the dress the dress is going to fit her great I'm gonna to have to be more worried about length and uh, the size right through here in the shoulders than anything but we're keeping this simple so um, so I'm measuring up here because I want an 18 month size what I'll do to double check this is I'll go measure one of her dresses in the closet that I know is a little bit big on her and that's what I'll go off of. Remember, spring's just around the corner. But if this is something they're going to wear now, like for Easter Sunday that might be two weeks down the road, then what you want to do is go ahead and take her measurements and I always add about a quarter of an inch to that measurement because they, kids this age, they just grow. They can just grow overnight and then get that nearest amount. Now in this amount, with the measurements, we know we're going to follow this line down. This is the line we're going to follow straight down now, okay? I'm just going to put an imaginary line here. So now we're doing dress D. We come over here with her measurements and right here we need one yard of fabric of the 45. If it's the 60 inch wide fabric, then we'd only need three quarters of a yard. Okay, but she needs one yard. So now I'm going to circle that amount. And uh, how much did I end up getting? I ended up getting a yard and a half because I'm making two dresses and also because I'm making some quilt squares. So keep that in mind. You might want to get a little extra fabric if you want to make some five inch or uh, four inch quilt squares. If you have another project coming up or if you are making the hat. If you're making the hat, then again, you would follow straight down. G is the hat. And so the hat, you would need a half of a yard of 45 inch wide or 60. You'd need interfacing and you'd need lightweight fusible. Fusible needs to be lightweight and you'd also need cross grain ribbon uh, to decorate your hat or some sort of piping. So you flip it over and this is where you make a note on the pattern. And I do it at the store. Like I said, I bring my erasable pen with me or a pencil and just do it lightweight and give it a circle. Go to your dress number, do your body measurements, run your imaginary line, your, your lightweight line down, and then you can see that. Um, I do that so I don't make any mistakes. You don't have to draw on here. And I've been doing this for years, but with my vision, I have to. So now this is where we come uh, back up to the top of the pattern. Now we can get... Uh, the fabrics we can use is listed right here. I'll underline that so you can see fabrics. And this right here is our notions. So this is important and this is important. So fabrics can be cottons, cotton blends, ginghams, laundered cottons, uh, batiks, calicos, chambrays, um, pit gauze, lightweight linen, linen blends, um, you'll know when you see it. You see baby clothes. You know what they're made out of and you can you can figure that out. It says here this is not suitable for sleepwear. We discussed that in the very first video and about learning to sew to be sure that sleepwear fabric will be listed on the bolt of fabric because it must be fire retardant. You don't want to put your baby to sleep in a nightgown that's made of polyester and it melts to their skin and having fire retardant fabrics can give your baby time and you time to get children out of the house. So I can't stress that enough. All right, so also it says here, it says extra fabric needed to match um, the plaids. So if you have a plaid fabric that you're picking up, then you're gonna need another quarter to a half of a yard. And um, if you have stripes or any one-way design fabrics, so if you want stripes on the dress or anything like that, like navy stripes or something, then of course you're going to need extra fabric to match all that up because you've got to match your stripes up with your bottom pieces. So this is going to take extra fabric. So I always suggest put a nice random, especially for children's clothes, a nice random 
small floral or um, medium sized floral fabric works, um, balloons that are flying different directions, you know, anything that doesn't really have a super pattern, then that's the best. That's where you're going to save your money by using the most fabric without wasting fabric. And next on the list, okay, now we've got our one yard of fabric that we picked out. Pink gingham. We love the pink gingham. Dustin picked it out. That's what he wanted. That's what we got. And any other fabric that it may call for. If it had like a white lapel or you wanted a pink lapel or something, then you would get a solid fabric of that as well. Now we're here at Notions. This is, Notions tells us what we need to make this dress outside of the fabric. So for Notions, we need matching thread. So pink fabric, pink thread. Black fabric, black thread. White fabric or white based background fabric, white thread, etc. You get it. One package of quarter inch white elastic. Okay, I showed you that in the other video. So we got a package of quarter inch white elastic. We're not making A and C, so we bypass this because A and C, which is right here, A and C require one package of right half inch wide fold bias tape. Now I bought the bias tape just in case I was going, because I, I wasn't quite sure which one I was going to go with, but, um, but I went ahead and bought bias tape, but I don't need it because D doesn't need it. Now, six ribbon rosettes, if you're doing F down here, you'd need six ribbon rosettes right here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. You could do that or you could just do buttons. So you can get creative here. You don't have to do exactly what they tell you to do, but remember you're a beginner, so you wanna kind of stick with the rules, right? And that's it. That's all we had to get was the thread and a package of quarter inch white elastic. That's all that was required for D, for the dress D, which is this dress right here. Okay? I told you this dress is going to be so easy. One yard of fabric and quarter inch white elastic and some matching thread to the fabric that you choose. That's it. And if you make the hat, then of course you want to come down here and you're going to want to read what the hat takes okay which is also interfacing that just interfacing is just a stiffener and you can iron you can iron it or you can get a fusible fusible means you have to iron it to the one side of the fabric all right but we're sticking with this dress so now we've got our fabric we've got our yard of fabric picked out we've bought it we've got it home and i want to tell you uh, why we're on this that this right here is just another language so it looks so formidable but looky if you fold it in half to the English side there that doesn't look so bad now does it and you don't even need all this really all you needed was those directions right here see so you ended up only needing a few of these sections that you were looking at so it's not so scary now when you look at it like that, right? So in our next video, we're going to discuss the contents of the envelope. That's right, the contents of the envelope. We're going to talk about how you cut your pattern out, how you iron it, uh, the directions. We're going to read the directions together step by step. And we're going to talk you through making this dress before we actually use a single pair of scissors. Okay, we're not cutting anything until we read those directions and know those symbols and know what they mean first. Trust me, it's important because some of these uh, pieces on some patterns, when you get more advanced in sewing, they may ask you to turn the pattern upside down. And then like, like on a sleeve, you'll cut up uh, two of them uh, with right, the fabric right sides together upright, and then you turn those sleeves upside down and then you do it again. So that's what I mean. So. Following the directions and reading them first is very important because you don't want to use the scissors until you do. Because a mistake like that could cost you the fabric that you have. And they might not have any left on the bolt when you go back. You might have got the end of the bolt. So, um, so yeah, so just be very careful with that. But I hope I've made this very easy to understand. I'm going to let you look at this a little bit closer. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm trying to get my camera to focus here. Can you see that okay? 
So we got pattern number, the number of pieces inside the envelope. We're only going to be using, it looks like, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like we're only going to be using five pieces of the pattern. That's it. Honey, it doesn't get any easier than that. So anyway, I'm hoping that I'm making this easy for you. We're gonna take this one step at a time. We're gonna go slow. Normally, I, you know me, I go fast, but we're gonna go slow and we're gonna do this right. And when you get done, we're going to have a little girl's dress on your little girl at your house as well, running around. Flowing dresses, summer dresses. Easter, I can't wait. I love spring. It's my favorite time of year. And I love making clothes for the grandbabies, just like I did for my own children. All right? And for myself. The sky is the limit. My niece, uh, we talked about her and teaching her how to sew. And now she just made me a beautiful turquoise and white tote with a makeup attached bag. It is gorgeous. And that was my Christmas present from her. I want to thank Jamie for that as well. And a lot of my fans have sent me things and they're just beautiful things. And it's things that they've learned to sew because they've watched my videos and watched several other people's videos. And I just feel like I've been a part of their learning experience and they teach me as well. So we love you. Go with God. Part two coming up, the contents of what's inside the envelope. All right, go with God. Blessings.